Hello and welcome to Lemon Studios where we talk anything and everything entertainment. I'm of course Lemon himself, Zeke Lamone, and this is my review for season three, or season one, <laughs> depending on how you want to look at it, for The Orville New Horizons. Um, I am a huge fan of The Orville. Um, I know the rep that it has is like, oh, it's just a Star Trek ripoff. The big completely trans fan with you. I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan. Um, I don't, I'm not really the hugest fan of the J.J. Abrams movies. That was my first introduction to Star Trek. Um, I try watching some of the older episodes. Some are good, some are eh. I tried getting the Picard, I just couldn't do it. And even uh, the latest one, uh, what was it called? I forgot what the other one that wasn't Picard called, but I wasn't really a huge fan of that one either. Uh, but for some reason, this one clicks. <laughs> so, this one clicks. I don't know. Uh, I am a huge fan of it, I think. It, and also what I really like, really like about it is like, it's a show that's like figuring out as it's going on. Um, because, like, the identity of the show has changed from season to season quite a bit. Um, season one, because it really laid on the, uh, the comedy aspect of it, because, you know, Seth MacFarlane, and, you know, he, he knows his, he knows his comedy. And then as it just progressed, it just really became more, I won't even call it a drama, because comedy is still very much a focus in the show, but they figure it out, it was like, okay, the characters and their situations and what they do is the comedy. We don't need to force a joke here and there, like in season one, where anytime it got serious, they're like, okay, now deflate. <laughs> like, make a joke of having, like, someone come into um, the, uh, the, the, the simulator or something like that. Um, season one is definitely the weakest of the three. There are some episodes that really stand out to me. The one where they, where the city, uh, the whole planet is, uh, has a voting, uh, thing. That episode really stands out to me. Of course, uh, the sex change episode with Bordis in episode three. That's when the show really hooked me. Um, and also Firestorm, uh, the one that, uh, really, uh, focused on Alora, uh, when someone in the crew dies and she feels really bad about it and she goes into the simulator and she's like finding all these wacky things. That episode really strikes with me too. And of course, there's others. There's very good separate episodes within season one. And then in season two, it was like, I appreciate the overall story of it with Isaac and the Kalons turning, turning heel and going for the attack and how, okay, if Ed wasn't there and all these things didn't happen, I didn't have Claire there. As much as I find the uh, season finale disappointing of uh, season two with the whole timeline thing, like I think it's a good episode. I just don't think it's a good season finale. But how it ties up in with the whole story of season two, I really appreciate it. And then season three did both. <laughs> like season three is the best season of the Orville and probably the best season of television of 2022 so far. I don't know. It's a it's a dog fight right now with me between Stranger Things season four, um, The Boys season three, and the Orville season three. Like all three seasons were just stellar. Because every episode really stands out on its own. But the overall story of this season as well. And I know some, there's like this big debate of like, well, was there really an overall story? Yeah, there was. And it was really with Charlie and Bergen, like uh, her arc of how she went from hating the Kalons to sacrificing herself to save them. It's just absolutely uh, phenomenal storytelling. And I, I'm going to focus on the Charlie character for a little bit. Because I, I would really say this is her season. This is her season, and then the final episode with Isaac, because I would say Isaac like the secondary, because like this was his redemption storyline. I like how real they took it. I like how real they took it. It took me a while to really like the Charlie character. Um, but as we spent more time with her, and I was able to remove myself from the situation of not being as attached to Isaac and the rest of the crew, and understanding what she's from and some of the outside, Looking in, seeing the situation of the Kalons, all that stuff. Yeah, it would be really hard to like forgive someone all this stuff. So watching that whole arc of her, because I really do think that was the season. That was the season. The nine episodes was that season. But again, every episode really stands on its two feet. I even like the very short one, uh, epi episode three, I believe, where uh, Claire, not Claire's, um, ah, oh, Commander Grayson's. A planet that they used to worship her as a god they come back and like they figure out they're immortal and they just want to know what death would like somewhat feel like or like how close it would be i like that journey that was very fun the only things 
that I wasn't really a huge fan of, and I was worried about it in the first episode. I was worried about it, and it kind of it kind of uh, split out. It's two things. One, I felt like every episode went on a little too long, even the short one that was only an hour and one minute. I felt like you could have trimmed five to ten minutes maybe on every single episode because I did rewatch them Saturday because I have become under the weather a little bit, and I haven't really done anything this weekend i was like you know i really like that season let me just re-watch it all that's how much i really like this season and uh as i was watching i was like you could trim some of some of this stuff on every single episode and it all felt like a different movie but like i didn't hate it like i was like yeah you could trim it but i'm i'm not mad at you for it like i really enjoyed hanging out with all of these characters i i just had a real fun blast to it if you're not on the orville and the identity of the show of like, okay, yeah, we're Trek. Okay, go on. <laughs> the other problem I have with it is that maybe sometimes they leaned way into the drama of it. Um, I think the show is at its best where, you know, it's just a, a four-line story storyline. And, you know, there's still comedy within it that really gets it. Like, it's not overwhelming. It's not overjoying like, the, like season one, episode three, where... Yeah, there's comedy in it, but the focus is the story. Like, they're not going to reduce the story for a joke. Or they're not going to go way into deep of the drama with it. And I feel like sometimes they went too deep. Uh, that was mainly with uh, episode one, though, uh, with the Isaac storyline. But besides that, I really, 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 really enjoyed this. I, I can't I can't not stop saying that. I really, really enjoyed it. If you, are, if you haven't watched The Orville yet, season one might be a little hard for you. Because they do really focus on the jokes. In season two, they really figure it out. Also, sometimes the acting, they, they figured it out. They, they figured it out in season three. Everyone, Everyone's much more of a vet. But in season one, it really does, like, you hear paper the whole entire time they talk. And you can tell, you can be aware, oh, yeah, they're acting. Uh, they really figured out their characters in season three, especially uh, the uh, Commander Grayson one. Uh, not, not, no disrespect to the actress. I think she's really good. I just, I wasn't a huge fan of the character. I, I was not a fan of her. And then season three, they did it. And it was with the episode, um, The Tale of Two Topas, is when I was like, okay, Kelly's cool. <laughs> I like Kelly. When she stay, uh, stands up to Clyde and, and almost beats his ass, I thought that was so cool. And I was like, ah, oh, you're cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, what a season. What a season. I am I am definitely a team fan. Renew the Orville. Renew the Orville. Give me a season four. Uh, hopefully we get a movie. Too man, I, cause I know like these are gonna take a while with all the visual effects. Let's get a movie in between. Let's get a movie in between, Seth. Come on, give me a two-hour movie. You can do an hour thirty. You showed it. You showed it in the seasons. <laughs> you showed it this season with these episodes. Give me a two-hour overall movie, and then give me a season. <laughs> give me both. Give me all of it. I, I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. If I had to rank on limit skills, uh, man, it might be strawberry. It's strawberry lemonade or freshly squeezed lemonade. It's a strawberry freshly squeezed lemonade. That's how much it, this, this really does for me. And uh, for those who don't know, strawberry lemonade is the highest honor. Freshly squeezed right under it. It's one of those two because, again, I do think it does run a little long on every single episode. Like, I feel like every episode, it was probably five or ten minutes overstayed. It's welcome. And it was a little too serious at times. So I was just like, I get what you're doing. But that's that's also a strength with it. Like it's like a backhanded, it's like a backhanded compliment, really, because like you're like, okay, I know what you're doing. But what makes this show so great is that it takes like these really just far out cons, uh, this reality of like all these aliens, immortal people, and like just really humanizing the situation. And at times I'm just like, okay, I get it. But at the same time, like you, you're a clever show. But have you seen the Orville New Horizons? Comment below and let me know if you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. And if you like me, hit that subscribe button as I'm trying to go into my YouTube career. We are almost halfway to our goal of 2022, 100 subscribers. Please help us out there. That would be a really big help. I do appreciate it. And that will be it for me, guys. I'll see you here next time at Lemon Studios.